Let's talk about self-worth. The first thing people do wrong when they think about self-worth is they let other people determine what that is. Really? Are we still doing that? It's called self-worth, not other worth. Let's establish that self-worth is the value that we determine, the place we take in the worlds we live today. When I think about self-worth, I like to use a little tool where I think forward to the legacy that I want to leave behind, to how I want to be remembered, to the words I want on my tombstone. Um, let's forget for a minute that I'm Hindu and I will be cremated and I won't have a tombstone, but that's just a technicality. For me, I want my worth and my legacy to be determined by the place I take in the hearts of the people that I love. And I want that place to be big and bold and powerful and unconditional and full of joy. But that's me. For you, it might be building a financial empire. It might be raising fantastic children. It might be being a humanitarian and saving the world. It might be being an adventure fiend and traveling all over the world. It might be being a sex fiend and trying every position known to man. You get the gist. The point is, you have to take the time to figure out what it is that you want to value yourself as. Once you figure that out, you put your life on that path. It becomes your MO. It becomes your raison d'etre. And the universe just becomes the driving force that helps you achieve a life that you want to live. And if you determine those values and those metrics by yourself, you will never fail yourself. It means a lot for me to be able to talk about self-worth because just like many of you, I'm sure, I have personally gone through a lot of fucked up shit. And what pulled me out of those situations was someone stepping in and saying, listen, after you're done crying and feeling sorry for yourself and losing your shit because that's okay to do, it's time for you to pick yourself up, get your shit together, and put yourself back out there in the world. Because that's what we do. There is nothing in this world that you can't overcome. There is no problem that you can't address because you always have control. You have control to make the decision of whether or not you want to stick in the situation and sort it out because that's fine and good, but you're also always just one micro moment away from making a decision to change your situation. And that's all it takes. You are worth it and deserving of love and respect. That's for no one else to give, but for you to recognize. And it doesn't really matter what kind of a situation you're in. If you're hurt, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't try again. Because honestly, I really feel like love and vulnerability can live in the same space. I think that when people experience what it's like to be hurt, they become more compassionate. And I also think that the more times we fail, the wiser we become at coming up with solutions for our problems and for other people's problems. And it makes you more special. It doesn't matter what you're going through right now, if it's disability, if it's an illness, if it's failure, if it's the fact that you were left behind, left alone, if you were wronged, if something has been taken from you that you can't seem to piece back together again, you are worth it. And there is something special in this life that you have been intended by God, by the universe to do. Get yourself together, wipe away those tears, and put yourself back out there in the world. I believe in you. Self-worth to me is a muscle. Kind of like my abs or my triceps. They can be flabby or they can be strong, but they're always there. We all have some level of self-worth, whether we feel practiced or whether we feel like we could lift 500 pounds weights with it or maybe just five pound weights, we do have it. And so the question is how to tone it, how to strengthen it, how to practice it. And the best way I've known how to do that is to practice with the next step I can. So rather than go train for a marathon, so to speak, if I've only walked around the block, the next step is to walk around the block twice and then three times and like build up to it. And so when I'm practicing my self-worth, I am looking for the opportunities where I can practice in the small ways. For me, 
I often caught myself saying things like, well, it's not that big of a deal. I'll just go ahead and do it for her. Or, oh, I didn't want to do that and I now I'm just gonna keep my mouth shut. And so find the moments where you catch yourself saying, it's not that big of a deal. And where you would typically just sit back, lay down, be quiet, whatever that lack of self-worth shows up for you like, use those not a big deal moments to practice. Because if they're not that big of a deal, then there's no better place for you to actually say, you know what, I'm gonna say no this time. You know what, I'm going to share my opinion. You know what, I'm going to risk this. And if we can do it in the small ways, then our chances go up that when the stakes are high and we say, this matters, then we'll say, I've got it. I've been practicing for this.